And it looks like we're live. Holy crap. Oh, Who'd have thunk it? It's us. Uh, yeah. A reasonable facsimile thereof. Uh, give or take, you know. <laughs> Some of us. I mean, we're be... all living in a holographic universe it, anyway, yeah. so you know, it's you know, it's hard yeah, to see. Really, it's hard to say. Pretty much. Uh, anyway, Some, so welcome everyone to the goddamn show. We're here to play some Pathfinder. Uh, in last session, we left off crawling through a underground base full of zombies, which went had, has so far gone surprisingly well. Uh, so I guess before we get back into the action, let's do some introductions on who tonight's victims are. Uh, Bert, why don't you lead us off? Hey, I'm Bert. I'm playing Mornith, uh, the ice elven purveyor of other people's things <laughs> that yeah. likes to also burn other people's things. Sometimes like his own things. I'm fair that way. Yeah. Perfectly fair. Yeah. As long as something burns, I'm okay. That's what counts. That's, what That's what counts. That's what counts. It's the only thing that makes my cold, cold heart warm. Yeah. That's that and entirely. jalapeno poppers. Oh, yeah. You got to. Uh, moving on down, we got us a Dan. Everybody, Dan with the Defenders playing our halfling detective wizard, Sherbert. Uh, I'm all out of fireballs, so good luck, everyone. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. No fireballs, which means I will have <coughs> much more fun. All right, kicking us over to the other side, up at the top, there's Jake. Hey, I'm Jake. I'm playing a seer elf who's betrayed his magical heritage by becoming an alchemist, nicknamed Beaker. Uh, he brews things, and he likes experiments. Very cool. Moving on down, we got us a Jeff. Hey. Yeah, I forgot how to do Zoom. I'm dying. Uh, let's see. I'm playing Good Boy version 3.0. Uh, he is a uh, he is a a, a a marksman. He's a way of the spell shots. He's a tiny little uh, robot dog who has a giant cannon. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he doesn't really speak all that well yet. He he mainly just says bark bark. But he's trying to get more words out. He's trying. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, it's important to remember he's version 3.0, so like they've been working on this, yeah. and then it's maybe we'll get to 4.0. 4. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very cool. Last but not least, hiding down there in the corner, we got us a Jeremy. Hello, I'm gonna be playing Barbar. He is an adopted orc turned farmhand turned spear touch barbarian, so he's like a self appointed Barbadin, I guess, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's just doing his best to like soak up all the hit points he can from the universe, as Jeff put it. I'm going to deny everybody else hit points. Got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So yeah, last time you made your way to the base of the Whispering Way, bought some zombies, almost got shot with a crossbow, bought some more zombies. Well, exploded some zombies and then fought slash exploded some more zombies. And yeah, that's pretty much the story so far. So let's get right back into it. Uh, we pick up after you all have finished slaying uh, what appears to be all of the zombies in a large room in front of you. Uh, and you're ready to proceed. So I'll let you all continue on. Oh, that seems like a good place to stop now. <laughs> sure. Uh, I mean, did, Mark, did we did we actually clear uh, this room? I don't know. Have I don't think we've even gone look? around. I don't think we've but, even uh, gone around. I don't think we looted bodies either. It, Mark, Mark. The zombies don't really have anything on them, so... I mean... I mean they got you, body parts, don't they? They do. If you want body Mark, parts, Mark. you can definitely loot those, yeah. Anyway, if you want to loot bodies, I'm going to just kind of plug a gaping chest wound here. Sounds good. As you do. Well, this one's got a do. perfectly good chest. You can just swap it out. I mean, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I am trained in medicine. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to shove rotten meat inside of my wound. It's just a hunch. You know, I could clean it first. Oh, it's true. Yeah. Okay. Press the digitation. Shove the meat in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's how they do hospitals, right? Yeah. 
Yep. I feel fairly certain about that. Not shoving rotting zombie meat into your chest. I think Gwyneth Paltrow would disagree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think she'd be all for it. Uh, sponsored by Goop tonight. Ugh. Gwyneth Paltrow's <sighs> personal brand of, uh, you know, zombie witch meat. Craft and idiocracy. That yeah. supposedly smells like her vagina. Yeah, you know, I was going to say you don't want to know where the goop comes from. But. Yeah. yeah. That's exciting. So, Sherbert, you move into the room. Yeah, can, I, figure, I figure we might as well be a little productive here. You can you see know. that it is empty-ish of, you know, animated dead. Uh, you can see there is this large stack of wrapped bodies over in the corner. Uh, let me adjust my sound real quick, because that song is slightly louder than the others. Mm. Um, I feel strongly that we should burn them. They come pre-wicked. I do. Hey, these all seem to have the same kind of wrappings and burial preparation as the ones out of the coffins you saw earlier. Kind of like they popped them out of their boxes and just stacked them there for later use. Mm. Well, I feel confident there's someone alive behind us, but we could always keep clearing the rooms in front of us yet, too. Now, next to that stack of bodies, there is a door. Yeah. Some guy kept went running off down that hallway. Mm. I'm going to go check out that door. Okay. Listen to it. Check it for traps. I'll sniff the room to see if there's something that smells different than all these horrible undead things. This super smell is the worst power ever. <laughs> uh, sure. Mornath, go ahead and give me a perception test. And Barbar, same. We have weird abilities. Mornath, 21's good. Oh, yeah, start of a session. Everyone take a hero point. Ooh, hero point. Oh, wow, Barbar, fantastic. <clears throat> uh, all right, we'll, oh, God. we'll resolve Everybody's... Mornath first. Mornath, you listen in at the door, and you hear two very distinct voices. What What should we do, Master? They're, they're in the other chamber. I'm sure they'll be coming through any minute. In this deep, raspy voice. Fear not, my child. <coughs> they have come here with violence, but we shall see if we can sway them and maybe turn them into allies. When they enter, stay your hand. Just know that I have everything under control. Can't fit it on the camera when I'm pantomiming this. So when he says master, I'm doing like the pony ride slap. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Nice. Uh, and Barbar, I mean, the stench of death is very heavy. You do mm. pick up the scent of a living person through the door to the north. Uh, and then also the stench of undead, but it's it's different. It's like the stench of an extremely long dead body, like way past the point of rot. Mm. Mm. All right, so at least one of them's human. The other one is undead, but like super old undead. Like it's past. Oh, maybe maybe he's the lich that, you know, we're here for liches, right? Is yeah. Right? Maybe he's a lich. Probably. Was he whispering? Is he the whispering way? Did we find it? I don't know. These are the questions. I... Um. Yeah. So you you have information. What do you want to do with yeah. it? Do we just mm -hmm. want to talk at him through the door? Sounds like they want to talk. I think we should kick down the door and throw a grenade in. Or, you know. Because talking always goes wrong. <laughs> or So I horribly mean, wrong. 
you open the door <coughs> and then and then good yeah, boy shoots him yeah no if he's a lich bark, bark. Gonna, he's probably gonna say something to get in our head so i think the goal is to hit him in the face as hard as possible before he talks uh, uh, before he talks we should all stuff cotton in our ears and then we open the door and then good boy shoots him in the face I mean, I'm not against it. I mean, if we can't hear what he's saying, he can't sway us with ooh, hypnosis or whatever it is you magicians use. Uh, not quite that, but yes. <laughs> that sounds like science to me. You are a scientist. <laughs> I sometimes, am a scientist. Sometimes money is all it takes, you know. It's just as good as hypnosis. A lot less effort. All right. Do we just say fuck it and go? Bark, bark. Are you doing the, the stuff and cloth in your ears? I mean, it seems like the wise decision. Okay, why not? Okay, everyone stuffs cloth. Good boy, do your ears function that way? You just turn uh, them off. Yeah. I think uh, I think I'm just gonna shut down my audio processing or <laughs> no, something like that. There you go. Very or like cool. chef, chef like live ammo in there, so they can't hear. So yeah, yeah it's there. fine. I, totally just safe. just make sure it's primer side in and not. Yeah. That right. Would be you want the bullets to go out instead of in. Yeah. Bark bark. Okay, you're all. Oh boy. Ear plugged up, ready and for action. People. This is gonna go so good or so bad. We're all good so people. bad. You know, before we actually, I'll I'll start frantically tapping everyone's shoulders so that they know not to go through the door just yet. <laughs> then I'll pull out um, some elixirs of life and offer them to everyone. Mm-hmm. Yes, I have some yes, yes. minor elixirs of life. Is anyone drinking those now or saving them for later? I gotta save mine for later. Uh, save it for later. Oh, I'm down. I'll use mine. I'm using one as well. Yeah. How much is it? A D. D six. D six. Okay. Six. Nice. Well, I can't ask for much more than that. Well, you can. You just won't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. <clears throat> Fair point. All right. So. Barbar, bar, you're doing the door kicking. I'm going to stand yes. just to the side of the door. I, I'm going to have my crossbow cocked and loaded. So okay. I don't have to... What is not everyone move their tokens into the position they want to take? Right outside okay. the side of the door. Oh, boy. This is going to go so bad. Okay. Let me... The door kicks open. You're able to see inside, and you can kind of view inside as it is. Oh, I love that lich token! You see two people standing in there. One is very clearly undead, standing around some kind of arcane sigil on the ground with candles going on it. There's a body, one of the bodies like what you saw outside in the center of this arcane circle. Soon as the door flies open, you can see this undead dude's mouth start moving. Are you going in all <laughs> I charge, out? I rage charge and attack. Do so. <laughs> oh, Everyone, no. let's do a surprise round because he's not taking an action at the moment. So carry out your actions. Barbar, you're leading us off. Oh my God, this is such a bad idea. We're okay, such good so. people. Uh, yeah, as you see this dude. <clears throat> Turn him into a Muppet, Barbar. <laughs> Standing there. Oh, oh. So cool. Oh, 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 turn that guy into a Muppet first, please. <laughs> it's dangerous. All right, I'll kind of come over here. Uh, rage, move, and smack. Here, go ahead and roll it out. Oh, boy. I hope I hit. No. Well, we're fucked. 
Okay, who's going next? Oh, I will. If a 29 doesn't hit, we're bone. You going, Mornath? I was going to, yeah, I was going to lean over and use the spirit side crossbow. So take a look through the crystal and act its power so that I can see uh, ethereal and spiritual and be able to affect them. Nice. And shoot. Okay. 25 is a miss. To miss. So it doesn't go through him. It just misses entirely. Uh, Yeah, it just harmlessly bounces off of him. Okay, so it does hit, but there's something going on that it... Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. Who's going next? What does the circle he's standing in look like? Uh, Some arcane kind of ritual circle. It actually seems like the body on the ground is the centerpiece of it. Uh, You get the feeling that this may be the tool they're using to raise all this dead. Okay, so with my second action, uh, I'll recock my crossbow. Yeah. Uh, and can I talk? Can I say something as an sure. action, as part of an action? Damage the floor, ruin the sigils. <laughs> um, and I am going to shoot again, but I'm sure. aiming at like the floorboards that are uh, got all the sigils. Yeah, uh, yeah. On it. I'll say twenty uh, fifteen to hit it. It's stationary. Paints everywhere. Oh, oh 30. Wow. Well, dang. If only you could have yeah. hit him with that. No that, kidding. Uh, that's, that still would have been a miss on him. <clears throat> uh, oh, but yeah, you it. take a big chunk of this this blurring off. Uh, it's not quite enough to break it yet, but another good shot like that or two, and you'll definitely have broken. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then I can, if I just roll back around. Sure. So I'm not in the middle of the door for everyone else. Okay, who's going next? You said there's like an uh, instrument of some sort. Well, it's the, right? the the sigil on the ground. It's the sigil. Okay. Yeah. And it's surrounded by candles. Yes, you say. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna come running into the room screaming. I don't, I don't know who Mitchell is, but his ass is going down, and I kick one of the candles aside. Okay, you kick one of the candles aside. It had this weird kind of crimson glow with like a black core on it. And it like sputters out real large as you kick it and eventually extinguishes, letting off this gnarly kind of green like trail of smoke. Okay, cool. who's up next? Got something, Dan? Uh, I, I'm formulating. I'm formulating. Okay. I, I might have something. Mine's pretty simple, but if you got something you want to do, go for it. I was actually just thinking I might have a, a rope animate and then just swipe all the candles at once. Sure, go for it. Go for it, man. That's awesome. So that's just going to cost a spell slot. So I was just going to shoot Barbar in the ass and go close. I mean, that sounds like a good idea, too. <laughs> so there I will cast my rope and I'll just have it tie up all the candles and I'll pull them out or something. Sure, yeah. You snake your rope in there. It easily lashes around. Something like that. I won't make you roll. Um, Just like kicking a candle. You knock out the remaining four candles. Same thing. They all got that weird light, the giant sputter, and then the green smoke. Okay. Good boy. I can't actually see either of them. Uh, So he'll first action kind of maneuver slightly. Yeah. And he'll shoot for the other one because <clears throat> uh, no one's tried to attack that one. So then we'll fire um, with, yeah, with his arc Uh I will hero point that. God, I hate this game. I don't. I like this game. I just, I like saying that. 34 to hit. Uh, yes, that hits. That would have actually hit the other dude too. <laughs> Damn it. Damn. Is it, it's not a crit, is it? No. no. Okay. Uh, wait, hang on. Against uh, the first dude? Absolutely. Crit, I'm right? sorry. Yes. It absolutely oh, was it? a nice. crit. Yeah. All right. ignore, ignore all that piddly, yep. piddly D6 is D8. Yeah. So let me just Get drop right. this D12 there you go. really quick with six. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Obliterate <laughs> this dude. Like nothing <laughs> left. <laughs> That poor bastard. Oh, there's also one extra point of fire. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's that little crazy. spark that catches him on fire as he drops. Yeah. 
as like you the Balrog turn, whip coming up. Yeah. <laughs> as, as you turn him into dust, you also evaporate hey, him at the same Melissa, time with you know, thank a flash you. fire. Uh, that is a hero point for everyone, so go ahead and add another Ooh. one. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, and then points. And so does points. for so not my third fire. action. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I burn them all the time. Like, I just... I just re-roll like crazy. Uh, I'm going to do last action thoughtful reload. Uh, yeah. Can I do some kind of occultism type test on what's going on in this room, this guy? That kind sure, of sure, sure, sure. Yeah, give me an occult test. Cool. cool. Uh, it's just a 20. 20, that's good. Uh, you know that if this dude's truly a lich like you're thinking, they've got no real weaknesses. Uh, mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. fact, they... They really only have like resistances, so you know that this dude's going to be resistant to cold damage, um, and he's also going to be resistant to uh, physical damage uh, from non-magical sources. Um, liches are soul-bound to a phylactery, and killing a physical form doesn't actually kill them. It just makes them respawn that is a lot that he has to try to convey uh let's see he'll he'll get he'll turn the radio station on inside of him and he'll bark 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 cold bad bark 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 physical bad bark 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 vase somewhere here we should smash bad bark bark <laughs> something like that beautiful yeah, that's right. No one can hear. <laughs> it's everyone's got shit. <laughs> so all this effort. Oh, that hurt. <laughs> so this big undead lich dude turns towards Barbar. Oh. Now, children, if you've got that out of your system, I would like to have a peaceful conversation with you. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I see your lips moving, but I can't hear what you're saying. Well, I don't really Does he have, have lips. lips. No, he doesn't really have lips. You just see the teeth going. Oh, sorry. You, I see you... you're doing this, but I can't hear you. No, I don't have any minions left that know sign language. You put down weapons. Peace. He's being very persuasive. I feel like I'm being mind controlled. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like kneeling. Sorry. Bless it. We'll do this the hard way then. Uh, as he casts a spell. Fuck, I'm sorry, guys. I know. I feel bad, but in some ways I kind of enjoy being deaf. Oh, God. So, Barbar. Bar, uh, you need to make me a DC 36 reflex save. I... Jesus. Okay. Uh, can you even? I mean, I could crit. Nope. Nope. You take 67 points of damage. Oh! I'm still As up. this lightning bolt, Palpatine style, jumps out of this dude's fingers into Barbar. -bar. And then from Barbar, -bar, it leaps over to Beaker. Beaker, make me the same save. Yeah, sure. I'm sure this will go great. <laughs> oh, it's not rolling. What? Roll. Oh, there we go. Oh, I, it's not rolling because it was a there huge we go. success. That's a great roll. Uh, yes, it is. In any other context. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go ahead and take me 67 lightning damage. Okie dokie. Oh. Uh, I'm going to spend a hero point to just not die outright. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, uh, children, would you like to talk now or shall we continue this pointless dance? Things look pretty bad in there. <laughs> bark, bark. I said things look pretty bad in there. Bark, bark. <laughs> dance? You want me to dance? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Morda puts away his weapon. 
Good. Someone has okay. sense. He's I'm just looking at you, Barbar. I'm not going to do anything at this point, I don't think. Ah, oh, man. Am I dumb enough? I think I am. Oh, jeez. I think I am. Don't make me do this. Oh, I know. I know. I'm sorry. 25 is a miss. AC's a 31. Miss. Oh. There's a crit. Okay, that is going to hit then, because the crit status bumps that up. From a, it bumps it up to a hit. It just bumps it up to a regular hit. <laughs> okay. And I'm assuming he's evil, right? Oh, yeah. So this is positive and holy. I don't know if he maybe has any weaknesses to those. And then also an extra four holy damage. He does not seem to have any weaknesses. I was about to try. That one actually hurts. Okay. And then for my third action, I'll roll it. And then if it doesn't crit, I'll do something else. Okay. I'm going to use my once a day auto crit. Nice. Oh my gosh. Nice. I was not expecting this. 44 damage. Wow. And then I'll do 2d6 more for the... Uh, Holy. And then I need to look up what's depending upon his level will affect how much health I get back. Okay. Hey Nothing. Captain, thanks for those bits. Wow. That's five hundred, so everyone take another hero point. Oh Yay. thank god I needed one. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> okay. Uh what level is he? 12. Oh, crap. Oh. Oh, he probably has a lot of HP. He probably does. So I'll get back. Be big healthy. I get back 24 health. From both, nice. both attacks? No, just a total of 24. So 70. And then after that, like, just take a look at him. I assume he still looks fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> fair is fair. I feel better now. Are you ready? And to now talk? I'll actually take the <laughs> I'll take the <laughs> thing out of my ear. That was Just impressive, being... boy. Not many have harmed me in the way that you have. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you'd kill all my friends, though. I, I would, yes. I had to try. I mean, you get that, right? I understand. Pride is a powerful tool. Um, ew. Why don't we go somewhere more comfortable? Uh, why don't you join me, all of your friends, join me in my study. As he walks past you into here, and he pulls up a chair. I have a couch, but it won't fit everyone. Are you going to turn us into undead? I vegetation to clean my pants and then stand up. I have no <laughs> intention of changing you in any way. In fact, I am <clears throat> here quite against my will. Oh. I feel like we are too. <laughs> Do you know that you're traveling through the universe in a spaceship? Yes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, he believes this. Yes. I am old. So very old. I've seen many things in this vessel. I've been to many different places. I've conversed with the founders. I have visited them after their downfall. Of the fish skins. Yes, the ones with the weird eyes on their sides. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, how are you all doing? Are you, well, I know you two are injured very clearly. 
Uh, and he starts rummaging through his drawers and his desk. Uh, and he'll, whoever wants one, he'll hand out an elixir of life. Uh, greater. Ooh. Well, I'll, I'll take one. <laughs> uh, you know, take each one of you who are injured, take one of these. Fine. No, thank you. I would drink one, but they don't do anything for me anymore. You can just give mine to somebody else. Okay. And you can look up what that does. Elixir of Life greater. It's like 76 plus a number. Yeah, I mean, if he's just passing them out, I'll take them. He, he'll give you... He's not giving you spares. He's giving you enough. Okay. And if Barbar right. Bar hands his off to someone else... So, I take it you're the mercenary group that the old king has warned us all about. Maybe unnecessarily so, it seems, but yeah. You're the ones who slayed, killed Sister Aberrants. Don't be shy about it. It's something to be quite proud of. So, you've all come into my home, destroyed my minions, slain one of my personal aides. That was an impressive shot, but I don't appreciate being splattered with Dave. He had a name. He had a name. Most people do. I mean, like, kind of a lot of these people are just kind of nameless people that we just go around and kill. Well, if you kill them before you get a chance to talk to them, that is how it goes. Uh, speaking of names, my name is Lucius. Sherbert. Sherbert. <clears throat> Thank you for your hospitality, Lucius. Yeah. So I'll tell you what, I need something done that I can't do myself. If you do this for me, you will... you get two rewards. Oh. The first, and I think probably the one that will interest you the most, maybe, I don't know, um, will leave. Oh, like, all, all of you? Yes, we don't want to be here. Who's making you be here? Then? It's the old king. He is aiming at reclaiming his throne. Moving his pieces back into place. And he has stolen something very valuable to me. Mm. And he holds it hostage. I assume it's your, uh, you know, phylactery majabber thing? Exactly. He destroys it. I die. Permanently. It's a strong bargaining chip. Yes. And sadly, uh, through my long life, I have forgotten the secrets to creating another one. So, recover it for me. That way, my flock and I can scurry away and continue our research in peace like we were doing before. So, and uh, your second someone... reward is a treasure chest full of loot. Oh, everybody likes loot, I think. Yes. Mm. So, do we have a deal? You're not, like, secretly raising an army to come and attack, like, the cities and villages and stuff? No, we were raising an army because the king was forcing me to under threat of sure, death. Sure, yeah, yeah. Back, back on that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, I mean, can I just be, like, totally candid with you? Go for it. The, the details of this treasure or how it would help us against the king, kind of important versus sure. being vague. Because I think you can probably guess that unless it was something pretty amazing, 
my first instinct, unless it was amazing, would if we find your phylactery, I think you can guess what my first instinct would be to do if I found your phylactery, because that would also prevent you from being here. Yeah, but my army would still be here, and so would my minions. Okay, right, I'm, I'm going to try and gauge him if he's full of shit when he says his army would still be here when he's not. Yeah, uh, you want to do a, uh, God, what kind of test is that? And good boy to occultism, see if that's actually true. Uh, that's sure. probably better. Uh, 26. So, yeah, occultism, the way this works is when undead are, are summoned, resurrected, um, they're bound to their master's will. Um, and it's something that the master has to continually reinforce until a certain point, and then it just becomes a permanent thing. Mm. If the master is slain, the undead just simply aren't under the control of the master anymore. Mm. So they're still going to be there. They just won't be controlled. Mm. Would that be an inconvenience? I mean, it, you don't know for sure how large his undead army is, but yeah. I mean, army of one, right? Army of one. This isn't the. This is. I have a, a great undead horde. It numbers yeah. in the thousands. I don't have enough fire. Good boy just okay. keeps cackling whenever he like compliments the army and how good it is. And he's like, <laughs> bark, bark. Okay. I mean, if you want to know what's in the treasure, I, I have an inventory. I'm glad to show it to you. And a chest is in the other room. You're welcome to lay eyes on it and examine it yourself. Is there any chance you could sweeten the pot with information to help us take? I mean, because this man did kind of affront you in a way, like take your phylactery. That was kind of a dick move, right? So Absolutely. what if we sweeten the pot and maybe in addition to treasure, because treasure is nice, but maybe old and wise as you are, you might have information mm -hmm. about the old king, which in some ways might be even more valuable. Yeah. You know, and then we'll go kick him in the dick for you. I'm okay with this. So, I mean, obviously we didn't kick your dick because it's too hard. Yeah. <laughs> but we might try his. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, sorry. I absolutely, I can tell you this. I mean, I will tell you, and my promise is, I know for sure that he is gathering his contacts in the seven coins. I don't know for sure who all they are, but I can give you a name to start you on the right path. And I can tell you the secret to the old king's immortality and how to slay him. That sounds neat. Also, you know where his like sword is? I don't. No one seems to know where that is. Yeah. But the good thing is, is if you're looking for that, the people who have my phylactery probably have information about that as well. Fair, fair. So, do you want to see the list of the the goods I'd be willing to give you? I feel like I might prefer to be surprised. Okay. Personally speaking. Sure. So, uh, so the radio inside of Good Boy will shift, you'll static, and then you'll just hear like a random line from some kind of sitcom somewhere, and it'll just say like "Serenity now," and like he says, he's kind of pointing at the chest, "Serenity now," and just keeps saying "now, now, now," uh, trying to impart the idea that give them, give give us it now. Mm. Mark, Mark, give me a. Give me a diplomacy test. <laughs> no. No. Oh, Reroll that. No. 
<laughs> I have plus two. I'm not very good at this. I'm untrained in diplomacy. I'll tell you what. To, to make sure that there's still, you know, uh, something sweet waiting for you at the end to ensure your compliance, I'll let you take your pick. One of you can have one item. Deal? It sounds tempting. Yeah. There. Uh, good boy holds up both his paws and, like, kind of basically gives him the bird with two different fingers from his paws to suggest <laughs> he wants, we should have two instead. Fine. <laughs> uh, I will relent. And I will give you two. Let me get that for you. I hope you don't take this personal, but I'm a little troubled by how friendly you are. Just feels weird. Just because I am an ancient undead entity does not mean I'm necessarily a bad person. I mean, again, don't take this the wrong way. I'm, I'm grateful for your hospitality. I did see the extra sparks of holy damage go off on you, so like, I don't want to get into labels or anything, but that kind of does mean you're evil. Oh, I would never deny it. Okay. But he's very nice, is the point. Well, I mean, there's evil, and then there's evil, right? There's so, like, you know, more, you know, more that. <laughs> you're in the party. <laughs> Imagine if Mornath were eternal. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I have so learned... So many things will be on fire. Somebody in my long life... Here's the, the inventory. You may take two items. <sighs> One thing I've learned in my long life is that if you go around being an asshole to everyone... It becomes very hard to exist on a day-to-day -day basis. You pick your battles, and you pick your wants, and you don't make unnecessary enemies. Well, we're doing a bad job at that, I think, aren't we? Well, I mean, I did ask to talk as soon as you came in, but your friend hit me in the face with an axe. It was a mighty hit. Very impressive. Oh, we had, like, uh, stuff on our ears because we were worried about magic being cast on us. That's not the most effective, but not a bad idea. Some spells do require an audible sort of thing to be conveyed. If you're going to do that, might I suggest... Um, some cloth soaked in beeswax forms a better seal. Pain to clean up afterwards, but worth it. Yes. <laughs> so, someone want to read what the list is? And these are cool. Well, we got the Emerald Grasshopper, the Chime of Opening, the Salve of Slipperiness, Necrotic Bomb, the Spider Gun, the Staff of Fire, Invisibility Potion, Scrolled Teleport, and 2,000 Gold. That Staff of Fire, fire sounds fun. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so a spider good gun. boy will start like scooping up the gold pieces with his. Hey, mind. good boy. How much is that? I'll let you bark, take bark. the gold, but that'll count as one. Oh, okay. You don't want the gun? He just spits it back into the chest. What about that staff of fire for you, Sherbert? <laughs> question, question on the spider gun. Does it shoot spiders? No, my friend. No. Oh. It shoots spider webs. Oh, that's and not nearly as cool. I think we should it. have the staff of fire. Huh. Yes, I wouldn't be using it, of course. I mean, I just think would be something nice to have. <laughs> I mean, we've had good success with fire. No offense to your zombie horde. Yeah, the webbing from that spider gun could be really handy in some situations. And... If we shoot the webs and then light the webs on fire. Mm-hmm. Oh, it would so... definitely be an alternate gun for good boy. 
it wouldn't be his main gun. Uh, mm. That's a big DPS hit, actually, because there's no because there's a lot of different things like yeah. there's no fatal tag and stuff like that. So, but it's like it's a cool you know what I mean you know what I mean like it's a type of thing like situationally. But yeah. if it's just pure DPS, like his beefed up archivist right now would probably out out DPS it. Perhaps the necrotic bombs might be more his speed. Fire, fire. Just attach bombs to his bullets and. Can you, uh, this is more a, a question for you, Chuck. Can you prepare two staffs in a day? I don't think so. Okay. I would have to look up those rules, but I don't think so. Okay. Because that, that might be a tough one there, because that, that's Staff of Illusions is pretty, pretty BS. I mean, it's... So, you want more utility and more playing around with that or yeah. put out some good damage from the staff of fire so if we want the staff of fire you know i'm, I'm fine with that maybe we can see how we feel about it but if there's other things that would be useful first you know we can do those like the necrotic bomb might be useful or you is know, anybody an expert in acrobatics? More now? Maybe? Maybe. Let me check real quick. If you were, that Emma uh, Only operator. trained. Only trained. Mm. Yeah. You have to be an expert to make use of that. But it doesn't give like a limit. Like it, the, the nice thing about that grasshopper one is it, it's not like a, you know, so many times per day. It's just. Are you an expert in ac acrobatics? If you are and you're going to try and jump. Then you got jumps. Now you can jump like 50 feet. Straight up. Cool. But if nobody's an expert in it, it's kind of a moot point. Not yet. I could be. I'm of opening. Could be handy too. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if we are to skulk around an evil king's lair. That's true. Wow, one one D twenty plus thirteen. But you can only use it what ten times? Yeah. Yeah. But still, yeah, might be useful. Do we want to go for utility stuff for now? Time of opening yes. and, and like necrotic bomb, maybe? I think that would be good. Uh, well, well the gold counter is bomb. one. Or do we want to oh, um, Lich, is the king also dead? Not so much. Yes and no. It's very convoluted. He's avoiding death, is my guess. That's a good way to put it. Um, so he's... either necrotic bombs would be not at all useful, or they would be useful and a terrific sense of poetic justice. You, you've heard of the term mortal and immortal, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So a mortal is someone who lacks immortality. Someone who's immortal has immortality, but lacks mortality. <laughs> the king floats in the center. He lacks mortality, but that does not have immortality. It's a very strange concept. Know how you do that. Ancient and foul kind of thing. Long before my time. Well, maybe it's good we're going and killing him. Maybe. Hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. I promise we try to be good people. Okay, let's go with the necrotic bombs and the chime of opening. Very well. There you are. I think Barb Park's already scooped up all the gold, though, hasn't he? No, he's, <laughs> he's, he's put it back down. Bacon. Okay. He's put it back in. <laughs> there is also the scroll teleport, too. So, but I think for making forwards progress, the bomb and the chime will be good for us. Okay. I will call it good. Wait here and I'll go and fetch those two items for you. Are those, well, You'll get all the bombs, so the five items. Also, did you ever see the deck of many things? 
I've heard of it. I've not come across it. Okay, that's just curious. It's not nearly as bad as people say. I mean, but we did know a man who lost um, much of his physical constitution and also his pants. That's true. So, okay. Anyway, I shall return. So he heads off about, to uh, that room Dave. to the north. What's that? Sorry about Dave. I'll piece him back together and won't let him go to waste. Okay. Yeah. We'll write him a little note that says, sorry, we killed you, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. He wanders <laughs> off, goes through that door to the north. You hear another door open up. Uh, I'm immediately looking at everyone like, so are we running for it now? Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. <laughs> I mean, like, full on Monty Python. Run away! Run away! <laughs> I think this guy probably legitimately does want us to go do this. Okay. He yes, could easily and, uh, have killed us. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. The question yes. is, does he easily kill us when we come back or not? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe not. I think at that point, I'm not smart enough to know how like drop spots work, but I'm pretty sure Morneth could help us with that. I think when we return to him, we don't return to him with phylactery in hand. I think we return to him to let him know that we've succeeded. And like once oh, things have gone in like a kosher we put, way, we put his pick... thing somewhere, we get the stuff, he gets his stuff, but we don't do that exchange where we die and he doesn't. Yeah. Like we're going to avoid docking. Like we don't, you know. Yeah, don't need to touch touch the treasures together. Yeah. <laughs> All right, he comes back after a few minutes. He hands over a burlap bag with five necrotic bombs inside. So if you want to add necrotic bomb moderate, four of those to someone's inventory. Uh, and then also the chime of opening. Neat. So... Now that you've agreed, I don't know the exact location of my phylactery, but I know the group that has it. They are called, confirm, the Silver Pound. They are a faction of the Vorobar. Oh, One okay. of the three wings of the Vorobar. No, we don't like them anyways. Yeah. So track them down. You have a name. You'll need to find people in the Vorobar to get information from. We got a guy for that. And then I think follow that back. What you're looking for, my phylactery, is a rod, a rough, unpolished, almost ingot of dwarven mithril. Wow, that's fancy. Looks unremarkable. About eight inches long, a couple inches in diameter. I had it uh, cast before I took my lichdom. I'm oh, sorry, I just made a docking comment earlier and I'm just... Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. now, now uh -huh. I'm talking about a good firm rod here. And, uh -huh. you know, perfect. Uh, also, like, offhand, did we, like, do anything right about destroying whatever magic thing you got going in here, or did we just do this all wrong? I mean, all you did was mess up my, you know, raised dead circle. I mean, I mean, we'll put the candles back and light it. I mean, if we were in the middle of actively raising the dead, um, you would have fucked it up and we would have had to toss that body out. No, if you'll forgive back. <laughs> what may sound like a silly question, uh, <laughs> I'm guessing somebody of your like age and power normally can tell where your phylactery is. Maybe something that'll help us. You've described the phylactery. 
Is there something they would typically do to prevent you from being able to sense it? Like, have they probably encased it in something? They've probably encased it in some kind of enchanted container. Something that blocks the... A lead box, probably. Essentially. Okay. Just because, you know, we're, we're probably not going to see the rod. We're probably going to need to know to look for the thing the rod's inside. Yes, okay. and I don't know what it's in. Okay, I mean... Alex. Can't hurt to ask. Some sort of box. Is your rod in a box? My rod might be in a box. Anyway. You're welcome to stay and rest. Um, I imagine that's probably not something you'd be too keen on, but you're, the, the offer is, is extended. No, we've seen how you treat people who rest. Um, I think we'll be going. <laughs> That's fair. Thank you, though. <laughs> That's fair. Sunlight. Yeah, we like it. That's absolutely fine. No, no, we don't. Shh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Today we like it. <laughs> until the rod we is like recovered. like it better than this. Yes, until the rod is recovered, I have to continue on with my duties here. Oh, like a real random question. Like, if you're freed from this, will you, like, get rid of your zombie horde thing? Yes, I, I don't want to manage that many. I mean, that's... Yes, we're a group of necromancers led by a lich, but raising an army of the undead isn't something that I strive for. Our actual goal, if you may know, is to rediscover my lost art of glitched them that way i can gift my followers with eternal life as well was that like mm. this guy who shot the crossbow at us is his name like fred or something is he one of your guys too it's probably ralph ralph i should know sorry to him too i guess it's fine I don't... we didn't kill him well that's good that's good anyway any other questions, or will you be on your way? No, I'm on my way. I'm just, I'm just going on my way right now. See ya. <laughs> so long. I'll get up, dust off my pants, and just kind of like do a jig out the door. Just <laughs> I'm just on my way out. Good boy gets up from his spot on the couch, and there's a little present left behind. <laughs> oh, no. Just leaves. An oily protein spill. Ah. Robo robo accident. Oh no. An oil stain. Yeah. Okay. Have fun with that. So you all you can got leave. Yourself some Don dish soap. Oh my gosh. You all can freely leave his um, little base here. Uh, you're in the Undercity. So you're fairly familiar with the layout. Uh, what's next? Uh, probably crying. Mm -hmm. I mean, probably a little bit of that. A little bit of resting up probably wouldn't be bad. Maybe think about how we go about investigating that group of the Vora Bar. Now, we got that one guy that we, like, installed as the leader of the bandits. You do? A while back. Yeah. Um... Lean on him. Maybe, maybe we tap him for a little of that insider information. You know, we said we might come calling. That is true. Was that guy's name? That fellow's name. I should have asked him if he had spells he could teach me. Gosh darn it. You can go back and ask. I will. <laughs> oh, his name was The Brad. Yeah, that's the right. Brad. The Brad. That's right. The Brad. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, Sherbert, you bravely returned back. I thought you all left. Yeah, sorry. I was kind of curious. Like, I got the spell book, and it's got a lot of room in it and I'm not good at filling it. 
Oh, so you when you go back in, is he scrubbing? Is he scrubbing the couch? He's like, there's a. He's got a couple. A he's got a couple zombies you know, scrubbing it. I'm not really looking for a lot of like raise the dead sort of stuff. But you know, what's the the highest level of spell you can cast? Oh, it's, it's just three, just third. I can teach you vampiric touch. I mean, that could be kind of neat. If you don't mind. Sure. I mean, that's fine. Uh, I don't rightly remember the rules on learning new spells. Let's see if I got them in the notes. I don't either is the problem. Um, because I, I have that uh, spell book that gives me an advantage on it. That we found just recently. The Endless Grimoire. You must pay the cost listed in addition to the price. Plus one item bonus check to learn the spell. It's be on your your magic magical tradition spell list if you're using the learn a spell ability. Wow, where is that even at? I don't even have that anywhere. I wonder if I can drag that onto my sheet somehow. Well, the the good thing is, is the base cost would be 18 gold. I can do that. Just learn a spell. And you got to give me a DC 20. Good tradition, do, man. Do I just basically make an arcana check? Uh, that's a good point. What is your tradition? Uh, I took the, um, what is it? It's Arcana is arcane. my tradition. Arcane, yeah. Yeah, you're fine. Vampiric Touch is, on, is in the Arcane tradition. Okay. Arcane, Divine, and Occult. Okay, so yeah, give me that DC 20. Uh, so give me an Arcana test to count for your book. Pay the 18 okay. gold. Uh, turn that on. It won't let me turn it on, so we'll just have to do the math later. Okay. Oh, not a problem. Duh. Okay. <laughs> I learned good. He gives you everything you need to learn it. Uh, next long rest, you'll finish learning it, and you will have Vampiric Touch added Neat. to your spell book. You know, Think about some more. Um, okay. If you would wish to enter in as an apprentice, I have much I can show you. Well, think about it. I don't want to be murdered by Barbar. You saw how he was. That's fair. He was a powerful warrior. He would kill me, like, with one shot. Okay. Anyway, I have yeah, cleanup thank you. to do. Sorry about your Dave and your couch. Yeah, that's... Shit happens. Literally. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you all head out. You're in the Undercity. What's the plan? I got a spell. Got to add it to my book. Take a nap. Yeah, Take probably. Go buy some cheese and jalapenos and just rest at the castle for a while. <laughs> Put that uh, jalapeno popper recipe to work. Indeed. I feel like I need a bark. bath. Bark, bark, bark. So, like, we're in the Undercity, right? That's yeah. not the mm -hmm. actual city. We're, like, we're in the tunnels below the... Yeah, tunnels. essentially in, like, the sewers below. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, is the plan just to head back to the castle? <sighs> I can yeah. get some rest. Yeah. Then maybe go try and lean on the bread. Okay. Yeah, you all, uh... Head back... To, you know, Castle de la Barbar. <sighs> Chateau Farmore. And yeah, big touch got to eat. Your uh, friend that you helped out to get the <clears throat> ring, he and his wife have moved on. Good. 
died? What's that? They died? No, they, they just moved <laughs> away. No. Oh, moved on. Okay. They just <laughs> okay. they've moved. They moved away. Got yeah. It. Um. Yeah. Temple services are going well. Whatever else you've got going on in the castle. If it's not too late, I'm going to go visit the bar, the tavern that has my chair, my there mug, and my jalapeno poppers. Yeah, you head over to the golden trough. He sees you. She pulls your chair out, sets it up next to the fire. Fills up your mug, and then uh, get you a tray of poppers. All right. <laughs> I might join him on this one. Sure. After being so wildly outclassed magically, I need a beard and poppers too, I think. He does. I'll set up some uh, lawn darts in the back and just throw lawn darts and eat jalapeno poppers. You're gonna, gonna set off uh, an op off the record lawn dart game yeah they did she did have to ban some lawn darts uh after next time good boy will spend some time making some bombs he's gonna try to replenish his bottled lightning stock so that okay can that's you cool. can you use those necrotic bombs that we got yeah i can nice. i can just pour any bomb on so basically nice. what i like i do is i pour it on my my ammunition when i fire so like it kind of changes the effect slightly but like it's 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 still work i think i want to do something that make me feel like i've done something good i want to track down the um do you remember the boy and the lady who we had the uh the priests of saren ray like take care they had been experimented on yeah yeah they're oh, yeah. at the yeah. castle yeah oh they've been brought to the castle okay yeah I'm gonna get, go see how they're doing. Just like some sort of like positive interaction. I feel dirty. Yeah, they're still, they're recovering. They're, they're they got a long path ahead of them after all the terrible things that were done to them. Mm -hmm. uh, they are the boys learning to read. Uh, Good. The mother is learning. You know, she was already you know, had plenty of skill to it. But the sisters are. Uh, Essentially training her up on, uh, you know, a professional style work. That way, when she's finally recovered, she'll be able to go out and find gainful employment. She's like, oh, thank you, Mr. Barbar. Thank you so much for saving us. Terrible down there. The nightmares still don't stop, but at least we have hope. Yeah, you're in, you're in the company of good people. And, uh... I'm glad you're here. Muttered under my breath, live long enough and you won't even have hope. There you go. <laughs> now, um, Mornath, at the bar, you do see that there is a poster up, like a uh, lost dog kind of poster. Uh, but I'm on it. For a bar bark. <laughs> uh, but it's a picture of a gnome. Uh, says their friend was a uh, diviner who's gone missing and the, the headline at the top is small medium at large <laughs> that's horrible Chuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's got an address I missed it all I heard was that it was bad it was it was very much uh, no at the, the tavern at the golden trough uh, there's a missing persons poster up. Uh, a diviner, someone's brother, has gone missing. Uh, it's got an address. Please help. Reward offered. And the uh, the title across the top of it is uh, small, medium, at large. So he's a, a gnomish diviner. Do you like that? No. I mean, <laughs> <nah>. <laughs> Uh, is the gnome familiar to any of us? Uh, it doesn't seem to be. No one that you've interacted with before. I, I asked around the bar. I'll buy a few drinks here and there. It's like, what's with the booster? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, Freddy's weird brother. Um, his name is the great Vologio. 
Well, anybody who starts the name with the great has got to be pretty awesome. Yeah, he's okay. He says he's a says he's a diviner. Really, he just seems to be one of those like con artists who's really good at reading tells on people. But he's gone missing. Probably gambling debt. Where's his brother? He, address is on there. He's just a handful of blocks away. You ever perform anywhere? Does he perform? No, he doesn't. He's not like a performer. Like you have to like go. He's got this little like den yeah, like set up shack. in their little shed out back with like curtains and beads and weird smelling candles and he reads fortunes and speaks with you know spirits and stuff like that. It's just a bunch of bunch of hooey. Okay. I guess. But, I mean, if you want to go look into it, I mean, it's address is there a couple blocks away. We need some well, late night shenanigans maybe. to pull ourselves out of a rut. How late is it? Uh, by this time of day, you make it to the bar. It's like seven or eight. Oh, we got plenty of time. It's early plenty of time. Before you go get into these shenanigans, do you want to round up the rest of the crew? Yeah, I go and uh, find everybody. Well, who, who came with me? Sherbert came with me, right? Sherbert. I, I, I came with you. Yeah, yeah, I pointed out. Uh, and, you know, so that uh, we don't confuse the issue by having more people there, I'll take down the sign. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah, you you head over, you find the house, a small, basic house, but you can see there's a... Uh, a cobblestone path that kind of leads around the side of it, heading towards the backyard. Uh, but lights are on inside the house. What do you want to do? Well, I would have wanted. I wanted to go back and just round everybody else. Oh, up okay. First. Yeah, and you yeah, head yeah. back to the castle. Okay. And just say, you know, hey, this looks like you know, quick little thing, quick little thing, help the community and all. Maybe give us a little morale boost. Yeah, yeah, we need a win. We, we, we need a win. Yeah. We took a big L there, and by L, I mean Lich. I well, mean, we took a big L there, and by L, I mean Lightning Bolt to the do face. you guys remember what yeah, I said the brother's that. name was? God dang it. <laughs> That's Francis now. Fra Frank? Frank. Frank, Frank maybe. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Francis is good, too. They call him Frank. Do you hear a you hear a bunch of explosions coming from Good Boy's room, just like just constant rapid fire explosions. And the door opens up, and he's got like another belt filled with bombs. <laughs> bark, bark. I'm so glad I don't have to pay a deposit at my own place. <laughs> Your security <laughs> deposit's gone. <laughs> okay. Bruce joined up. Anyone else could check this out? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll, yes, I'll come along. I'll do some shopping along the way. I'll buy some um, things on the way back. Oh, this time of night, there's only one kind of shopping you do, and I don't think we've got time for that. Unless you're like one of those five-minute guys, in which case there's plenty of time, but, you know, there's repercussions to that, too. I mean, maybe you can get one coming and one going now. <laughs> well, I... Talking about? Nothing. Nothing relating <laughs> to Calistria worship. Let's be on our way. So yeah, you make it back to the house, or you make it to the house, like I said. Small, really basic house, not in great repair. Lights are on in the house, but you do see this like cobblestone path going back, kind of back around the house. And you do remember the one guy in the bar said he had a little shed out back that he used as his like seance parlor or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, we should announce ourselves and then we can go check it out. Hmm. Yeah, knock on the door. Hold on, hold on. As this small door swings open. This house is gnome-sized, by the way. I just shoved the poster in his face. <laughs> oh. oh you've You're come, missing somebody? You've come to look for my brother, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Can't believe Robbie. I mean, the great Verbaggio, or whatever he's calling himself. I hear he's only meh. Not so great. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a total huckster. 
Like, but but he doesn't perform. So like, how does he huck if he's not like out there, you know, putting himself out there and he, making the coin? He's not doing that. So how is he a huckster? He gets people to come to him, and he gives them you know these fake fortune tellings and readings, and but they pay a lot of money to talk to the ghost of their long dead cat or some crap like that. So you're saying there's a lot of people that probably want to torture his ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he also liked to gamble, so that was a bit of trouble. Even did he win? People, not as much as he should for claiming to be a, a medium. <laughs> Maybe he's a medium, but the spirits all think he's a dick, and mm -hmm. so like they make him lose. If there was any truth to him having supernatural ability, I think that would be absolutely it. But well, where, where can we start? So, like, there's a whole list of people that might want him, like, taken. I mean, who is his last client? Do you have his books? I, his I, client books? You might check in his shed in the back. I poked around, but it's a wreck. Someone trashed the place. Ooh, so someone was looking for something. Maybe he got blackmail material. Maybe he's got... Any something. sudden expensive spending habits lately? I don't think so. He bought a new crystal ball, but I don't think he bought it from well, that magic shop in the town center. Is it still in his is his place? Is it still in his house? Yeah, it's correct, but it's still in there. Okay, then yeah, that's not important then. If it's still yeah. there, I mean, they would have taken that if it was important. Can we go look? Hey, go for it. Have at it. Uh, if you all succeed in finding him, it's not a lot, but it's all I got. I give you a hundred gold. Alive or dead? I mean, I would like you not to kill him. I mean, we don't. Well, no, but let's him. say that we get there late and someone's already had his fun and your your, your brother's dead. Yeah, I mean, it would give me closure. So the hundred gold still stands. Oh, great. Well, I, I just turned to you guys like, well, it just makes things easier sometimes. Just get that out in front. <laughs> I mean, it seems fair. It does make us look suspicious, but. You do have a very good point. We would want to come all this way and be like, oh no, I'm only paying you half. Exactly, because then we'd have to murder you. And it would just be a bad night. We're, we're looking for a win, a win. <laughs> we're gonna go check out his house now. Yes, please, thanks. <laughs> well, let me know if you need anything. Sorry, we had a bad day. He's just yeah. down <laughs> Here, have some jalapeno poppers. No. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you can all head around. You see there's this ramshackle little shed back there. It's built large for a gnome, so it looks like it's built to accommodate people of all sizes. Uh, very poorly put together. It's got this barn door kind of thing on it where it's just a latch, real basic. You pop the latch open and the door swings right open, but you can see it looks like the door was partially kicked in, like a couple of planks have been broken. Looks like just enough that someone could reach their arm through and open it up on the inside. As you open it up, it's there's beaded curtains scattered all over the ground. It looks like he had like the, you know, the plush like uh, velvet curtains hanging all over the walls those have been torn down there's a table with a couple chairs in the center that have been smashed um, you can see there's a bit of curtain that was pulled down that revealed a little bit further back into it like that was his little sleeping room shack behind it um, by the look of things I don't think whoever was here found what they were looking for I mean this is pretty extensive damage and usually that only happens if they don't find what they're looking for Let's find what they were looking for. Yeah. Uh, first of all, to try and just make it easier, detect magic. Yeah. No magic. <sighs> no magic in here at all. <laughs> There's actually a <laughs> negative amount of magic yeah. in here. <laughs> uh, and then why don't you just give me perception tests? Yeah. <laughs> Have Barbar take a smell around. Do you smell bullshit in here? Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere. The bullshit Bar reeks strong. Far more. That's bullshit. Right. <laughs> it's 
It's even uh, kind of chalky. Sherbert, you did pretty good. <laughs> Mornath, that's not quite enough. I got distracted. I found the ball. I found yeah. this crystal ball. It's like, ooh. I'd say if you want, I can try and roll it for something a little better, but if 18 is good enough. 18 will do. Okay. Uh, so I'll tell you what you find. You start looking around. You actually find that a couple things that are not necessarily clues, but just fun little facts. Kind of underneath where it looks like he set, there is a series of kind of like petals underneath this carpet here that looks like they had like cords running to them that he could like push to do different effects. Like one of them looks like it ran up into the table that smashed. There's another one that kind of shakes the only kind of lantern hanging in the room. Like some real, you know. Shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. But you do find under one of the torn down curtains, a logbook. Yeah, that's we go. Try to find his client list. Yeah, you start looking through his client list. Why don't I want a separate test on this, though? Let me take a look at what I want. Ooh, maybe an underworld. Uh, See if the if the the names are anyone. Do you have yeah. underworld lore as well? Yeah, yeah. We both have underworld lore. Oh, academia God. work here, because if academia works, just let me know. Like that's that's good boys jam. You know what? Oh. I would take academia too. I was just kidding. Are you serious? Oh, I'm trying to find what would be the best to <laughs> to discover like the well-being of a book if a book's been tampered with. Academia mm -hmm. is going to be thumbing through books all day. So okay. first okay. off, Sherbert, on your underworld test, um, you find all sorts of names in there. Big names, some shady names here and there, members of, you know, like he's had a... a Pretty extensive list of big people. Uh, same thing, Mornath. Both of you. You're like, oh, that person, I recognize that name. That dude works for the provisional government. This dude, I swear I saw on the deck of cards. Mm -hmm. You know, this, that, these, and those. Now, good boy, as you're watching them thumb through, you see that there's a page that's missing, and it's kind of towards the back of the... Oh. Yeah. Mark, 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 Mark. And he'll come over and then he'll start very, very carefully with his with his metal mouth, turning the pages and then pointing at the missing one. Yeah, you can very clearly see a jump in dates. <laughs> he even has like little tiny like lines, just like notes for himself to kind of keep track of who was coming in for what, talking to their dead mother, when big and, right, you know, Chuck, I, yeah i want to do something all what right so it's one page torn out right yeah and he's writing in this with a, like a normal like a quill right yeah all right so i take a piece of coal yeah on the next page uh -huh. <laughs> i dust it out to see what pressed through absolutely <laughs> i was honestly thinking the same uh, yeah. i was yeah so the i gotta tell you i was thinking the same thing <laughs> yeah absolutely you come up with a list of names, the in each one he's got like five or six different clients listed. You know what date they came, what time they came, their name. Um, even he has like an address listed for him, how much he charged, and what they came there for. Mm-hmm. Um. <clears throat> so the the we'll say five names you look, you can kind of dust it off. It's kind of hard to read, but you're looking at it and you can read the first name, uh, man's name. Uh, we're going to call him uh, bottle jar card deck. Cause those are <laughs> objects that I saw <laughs> sitting around. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That was so bad, your cat was offended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, my, that's my cat that's offended, okay. yes. Small fee. Uh, he was actually, he lost uh, his grandfather's sword while out chopping trees in the woods with it, pretending to be a soldier. Oh, jeez. And so he went here to see if there was any luck finding... Uh, what happened to the sword? 
the next one. Uh, it's actually a rather large name. Uh, one of the wealthier families in town. Uh, we're going to call them... Uh, Are they the, the, the Debejevums or whatever? No, we're going to call them... Uh, <laughs> Screen. Mrs. Ambercrombie, because that's a thing that came to mind. Uh, she was concerned that her husband was having an affair and she wanted to find out if it was true. Uh, the next one is a guy named Dan. I'm sorry, everyone. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, his problem was listed as uh, he's getting overworked at his current job and he wants to know if he'll have better luck looking for a new job. I'm hitting close to home, Dan. I'm sorry, but I'm just working <laughs> with what I see in front of me. <laughs> It's hard uh, to argue. Next dude, man named Fitch, lost a good amount of money to some very unsavory people and uh, wanted to know what games he should go play at to try and make the money back so he could pay it off. Final guy, uh, guy's name's Leroy. His uh, grandmother is sick on her deathbed, uh, but he wanted to know if he was included in the will or not. Uh, and if not, who was, so he can do some cleanup. Ouch. Well, I feel like the last two people, but in particular, Dan. <laughs> Highly suspicious. So those are the five entries that you find for the missing day, missing page. Okay, are any of those um, stand out? Uh, I would be looking at it as a, a underworld, underworld lore sort of thing to see if those main names mean anything. Yeah. Uh, I already can't remember the first guy's name. I mean, that's that's a heck of a name right uh, there. So. His name, we're going to call him Card Deck. Card Deck. Uh, yeah, he was... We just named him. <clears throat> what did he want? This is what I get for improvising. Uh, what he lost his, sword. his grandfather's yeah. sword. Lost yeah. granddad's sword. By chopping a tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, the next one was Amber Crombie. This is Amber Crombie, wealthy mm -hmm. wife, wondered Amber if her husband had an affair. Yeah. Husband yeah. cheating. Yep. Valid stands out a little bit to me. <laughs> yeah. The next one was Dan. Better job. I mean, that one, that one jumps out to me. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that one seems innocuous, like then there was the dude needing to win money. Ooh, that one's possible if he came back for revenge because none of the games were out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, what was the last one, guys? Leroy. Leroy. Grandmother sick. Uh, he did not want sick. chicken. Leroy. Are there the people on the wheel? Can we clear out some of these people on the wheel? That's right. He's gonna. Put some pillows to faces, probably. All right. In the handouts folder, there's a document called Missing Medium, where I've got that information listed. So we have record of it. So when I forget in five minutes, we can keep going. So you have, he actually has addresses for all of these people. Wow. Well. In all of this mess, did we find any clue as to who might have caused the mess? Um, Blueprint. Um, give me a survival test. Do a survival test. I like. Yeah. Search for physical kind of clues. Okay, and here we go. In the meanwhile, I'm going to take a good sniff of the book at the where the page was ripped out. Because hopefully if we get close to where the person is, I might yeah. have a sense. Do you want it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Eh. You. I'm gonna. I'm gonna spend a hero point. Sure. Guys are better you know. detectives. Uh, we now. have moved past another uh. hour mark, so make sure you take another. Uh, yeah. So, all the way back. Uh, okay, so uh, that just uh, redoes the roll, right? Yep, just re-roll it for me. Fifteen. <sighs> That's okay. better. Uh, yep. yeah, you do. You look around. It's been a handful of days. 
Looks like maybe the brothers kind of poked around here and too, kind of disturbed some things. Um, you do find in some of the, you know, bits and pieces, a little bit of the dirt outside of this shack, a footprint uh, seems to be a very clearly defined footprint. Um, probably nicer shoes and definitely, you know, larger, like a man, hobgoblin, bugbear, you know. Medium mm. to large size in the humanoid spectrum. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and Barbar, did you want to give me a perception for the scent? Yeah, I'll give it a try. It's like weirdly bury my nose in the book. Yeah. Eighteen. Okay. You sniff it. I mean, it, this room is full of the weird, mm -hmm. you know, incenses and stuff. This dude burns for his, you know, seances or whatever you want to call them, his readings. And uh, but in the book, you do pick up a scent that's a little different. It's kind of a a leathery scent, um, not like a raw kind of leather. Um, but you can definitely feel like a fine leather, something you smell in like a good belt or something like that. Um, and also you pick up the hint of, uh, alcohol. Mm. Like maybe whoever did this might have been drinking. And it's, um, smells like a pretty decent whiskey. All right. So we got some good leather here. If it's in the book, that means maybe some fancy like riding gloves. Which makes sense, because whatever they were drinking was fancy, too. So nice not to smell like dead bodies. <laughs> Good change. Yeah. Um, I, I should have just been a sommelier. So we're looking for someone who lives in, like, a, maybe a fancier part of town, right? Who employs bugbears? Well, that was right. just a size thing not an okay. actual but yeah grown ass man sized footprint and we got addresses right you got addresses yeah so would we be able to correlate some of these addresses to you know richer parts of town i, I can i actually have streetwise which i can yeah give me streetwise i don't get to use that very often because <laughs> uh, i forgot i have it yeah <laughs> i can use uh society nice 27 knocks it out pretty of the park. Good at. So the kid, Kardec, who lost his sword, that's coming from outside the wall, kind of in the farming area. Not him. That's definitely, you know, people of the earth, kind of. Uh, the Amber Crombies, they live up. Make sure I tell you the right area. They live up in Zone 6, The Rock. Very wealthy area. It's also where the tower is. So mm -hmm. lots of kind of prestige in that neighborhood. What if it was Miss Amber Crombie's husband? Got Could caught. Be. You know, let, let, let's get the rest of our, our, yeah. our info first, but I'm, I'm jumping to conclusions with you. Uh, let's see. The Dan lives in the west way interior west way uh decent places to live not super fancy but good neighborhoods fitch uh he lives not too far over from the golden trough in the silk bowl so kind of run down section of town and then leroy also coming from the rock. So it sounds like maybe Amber Crombie is our first. First. Oh, and I target. forgot. Fitch. Fitch is also. Oh, I did cover Fitch. Fitch is in the uh, Silk Bowl. Well, 
as a worshiper of Calistria, who is the goddess of, um, well, lust, revenge, and trickery, uh, hmm. would there be any um, temples devoted to her quote unquote worship in town? Yeah, I mean, you can, you, the big ones are going to be um, the Temple of the First Vault. There's also the Temple for Saren Ray. Uh, but yeah, there's smaller temples as long as she's not. What's her kind of alignment? Uh, I forget exactly. As I'm long as she's not head. like super outwardly evil. Yeah, she'll have a uh, temple. Here we go. Uh, chaotic neutral. Yeah, she'd have a temple. And I'm sorry, the right. card deck, he was southward. I was incorrect on that. Yeah, you can find a temple to her. Yeah, right. I'll say well, she's... If, uh, Mr. Amber Crombie was rich and he wanted to find some way of having an affair that would be secret, maybe going through... Those sorts of channels might be a good way of doing it. Could be. So yeah, you would probably guess uh, guess to go over looking the Mist Walk. Uh, the captain's right. Her temples often also double as brothels. So heading down to the Red District. Mm -hmm. Red light. Or at least I will. Yeah, this is the time of the day to do it, I suppose. Late night shenanigans. Woo of course, the only problem there would be if this guy is uh, so secretive as to abduct a gnome con artist, uh, he would be keeping things very hush-hush if, if he is, in fact, our, our kidnapping fellow. Mm -hmm. So maybe... Maybe um, maybe we'll ask Mrs. Abercrombie about things first and then uh, try to get her away from her husband to speak to her about it. And then um, we'll see what she's found out. Okay. Maybe we have conversations with them at the same time, but separately. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's uh, probably hitting like nine-ish at this point. Uh, you want to head over to the Amber Crombie house? I'm sure they're totally up for late visitors. Okay. You make your way over. It's a nice house. This up on the rock, it's kind of set a little higher than the rest of it. So from here, you can turn back and kind of look over the rest of the city. Um... You find this big pseudo mansion looks absolutely amazing. All marble. You uh, easily walk up to the front door, this big double door of carved oak. What's going on? Oh, uh, I hold my pinky out and then I knock. <laughs> you have a knock with your pinky out. Uh, that's how they know that you, you're allowed to talk to them. Absolutely. A very obviously a butler answers the door. Uh, good evening, uh, friends. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sadly, whatever it is, uh, we aren't interested in purchasing currently. I, did you not hear me knock with my piggy on? I, I did notice the this particular, um, you know... Uh, Cadence and um, you know, yes, I, I noticed and I appreciate that. That's. I mean, we're not here to sell anything. I mean, well, once the secrets out of the bag, all of the you know, peddlers come knocking with their pinkies out. Okay, I guess that's fair. Should I have done done like two pinkies out? Uh, I there is a new secret knock for rich people, but I can't tell you that. Oh, I Sorry. understand, you know, posterity and all that sort of thing, but don't worry, you know, we're landed. 
We've got a castle. We're not oh. around here. Like Oh, well, I did not know that. Well, it's very easy. Instead of knocking, you give a light rap on the door with your foot, but you hold your pinky toe up when you do it. Ah. Oh, okay. It's perhaps you've heard of uh, Chateau Barbar. Oh, um. Chateau Barbar. <laughs> I think I have heard. It is outside of the wall, a little risque, if you ask me. Oh, it's all, oh, it's all about risk. Being, yes. Well, at the very least, maintaining a, a risky sort of um, almost Living like a sense edge. of danger to sort of give, yes, a little edge to give us a sort of uh, people's lord Excitement. sort of, you it's know. A, I mean, when when the season comes, you absolutely must summer there. Of course, you know. Oh, okay. I will let. There's quite a lovely view the of, lady the, uh, of the, the house surrounding snow. woods and whatnot. Oh, is the is um, is Mrs. Amber Crombie in by any chance? Perhaps she would like to um, speak regarding an arrangement uh, between coming to visit sometime. I, I'm, I really, I do, I, I beg for your apologies. She is, she's in no state to receive a guest. Um, currently, um, she's quite beside herself in grief. Is she too missing someone? Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Amber Crombie has gone missing after some rather, um, unfortunate accusations, um, were leveled against him. By who? By Mrs. Amber Crombie. <clears throat> well, if we can be plain with you, we are members trying to be of good esteem of the higher society that are trying to subtly uh, review or investigate this sort of thing to try and assist with it in a way that doesn't have to call in unwanted eyes. Did I mention that I'm a detective? Well, we're all something of a professional adventuring individuals. We found a clockwork dog once. Quite the adventure that was. Let's look at Comes it. out. <laughs> just starts thrashing around with the bombs. No, 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 no. He's bark, bark. white arm. That's terrifying. Yeah. He would be great <laughs> for fox hunts, out, though. though. <laughs> I'm nodding along and smiling while I look through the door and I'm casing her place. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You can the see latches it's... on these windows. Yeah. <laughs> Unseat servant, get in there and get to work. <laughs> well, yeah. Get in there, crackers, and open these windows up. If you must know, um, she is choosing to believe more so that he's missing. Honestly, I just think that he's probably... Uh, headed off to their summer house to let her cool off for a while. Do you recall like any interactions with some sort of like a uh, small medium person? Oh, yes, yes, yes. You're talking about him. He is the one who caused all of this trouble. See, we had thoughts that might be the case. Uh, what is the great Verbaccio or something like I that? Don't yes, know. he is the George one. Something. He's the one who put it in, you know, or Mrs. Amber Crombie's head, that her husband was being unfaithful. Yes, he, he's the one that I placed the blame on. And of course, after that, the, the good sir left in quite a huff and hasn't returned since. So, so you do believe that he's at his summer home and is not missing entirely? I, they, um, this isn't the first time accusations of infidelity have come up. And it's usually what he does. He goes and he lays low for a handful of weeks and then eventually he comes back. Is he a man of <clears throat> is he a man of larger stature? I mean he's he, he lives a very luxurious life. I like physically in a way, you know, broad he's, shoulders and yes, you know. He's, he's a larger gentleman. Not, you know. So he's capable of handling himself in case of any shenanigans. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, yes. 
Okay. Well, all right, things seem... Just, just to be sure, though, perhaps we could... Talk to him? Y- yes, well, we could go visit him at his summer home just to make sure he's there. Yes, that would we'll be... Just, um... That would be quite... Um... Acceptable. Second, because I forgot the name of something. Uh, yes, he actually lives uh, the summer home south of town. Oh my gosh, load up, man. Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh, east of town in the uh, the village of Brawl. Uh-huh. I don't even think that's on a map. Uh, if you go to the Kingdom of Ruse map, which should be available now, and eventually you find Zolb, you'll find the village of Brawl not too far from there. We're really taking that detour now, guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's generally where he goes. It's a it's a few days travel. Mm. He should have taken that scroll teleport after all. <laughs> no. One one more thing uh, may sound odd, but uh, I obviously wouldn't partake of any of his stock. But could I have just a smell of his drink of choice? Oh, that's a weird request, but I mean, he does have a very particular um, uh, drink that he prefers. If you want to, I can show you to his study. Gotta, I assure you, I will not partake of anything, but just. Uh, now I'm just putting it out there. I am your super high diplomacy. You're skating through this because of that. Mm. <laughs> Here I thought it was because we were holding our pinkies out. No, it's pretty much because a barbar has a plus 82 in diplomacy, so... (laughs) Yeah, I mean, barbar basically can't fail. Uh, yeah, you... I only get four re... I only get four rolls. No, that only works with a big group of people. Oh, okay. Anyway, he takes you to the study. Um, yeah, it's hunting trophies, like heads are all over. Um, nice leather chair sitting next to the fire um he goes up to the the dry bar and he produces a you know decantered bottle of some whiskey and he hands it to you ah uh, yes this is his favorite drink it's it's rather hard to get but uh he simply loves it uh, it's wonderful wonderful notes of a aged oak little of this little of that the the real secret there is the peanut butter flavoring uh we buy it from a vendor and it's very it's called screwball Thank you so much that's yeah. a high palate alcohol right there you pop the top <laughs> off and yeah this is a match for what you smelled in that book oh man it smells so good i feel like you could just get some like cranberry juice and mix it together and it would taste like a peanut butter jelly sandwich they would get I, you drunk. He's he has had that before. It was Yes, I've snuck in a glass or two while he's passed out for the night. It's mm. delicious. Hey, at yeah, that, that point, you know, he drank a lot. Yeah. That's a match for what I got a whiff of earlier. Well seems like he's the guy we need to talk to. So. It's possible somebody else might you know, partake as well, but anybody, yeah, anybody else drink this? No, I'm just the master. I mean, well, I'm sure other people in town drink it as well. I mean, it's. Did you happen to catch who the master was supposed to be having an affair with? I mean, you know, we, we wouldn't want to be spreading mm-hmm. rumors or anything, I... but you know, if you just happen to have heard a name, a part of name, it would really help. We are very professional. I, I, I don't have the specific name but i would like to correct you uh just a little bit in in what you were stating you asked if i had a name 
which I don't, but you should have asked, do you have the names? It, mm -hmm. But then again, I don't. The master keeps that very... I really, I'm more of the the Mrs. Uh, servant. Um, sadly, I don't have any additional information there for you. Okay. How about her? Who is she having affairs with? I am not at liberty to discuss, <laughs> but I will assure you for legal reasons, the Mrs. has remained entirely faithful in her marriage. I bet it's Leroy. Yes. I'm sorry. To very ungentlemanly of me to be making uh, aspersions, even in a joking fashion. I will, Merely jests, I assure I, will, I may be just tense, you know. A rather wealthy person in the Merchant's Guild. Just putting it out there. Never happened, I'm sure. Never happened. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I do need to attend to my nightly duties, though if you would please continue on. And um, if you are going to hunt down, uh, you know, Master Samuel Abercrombie, I would suggest you look in his summer home. Like on the DL, like, do you want him to come back? Oh, I, I don't care. I mean, it, you think it's good for everybody if he comes back? It, it, the, the missus is definitely doing her part and showing her grief in this. Um, but, you know, if the marriage were to fall apart and she would through you know prenuptial agreements maintain a, a certain standard of wealth and if perhaps she were to move further along in a relationship with a wealthy member of a merchant's guild it could mean that we you know i get a little more help around here okay, okay. or I'm just saying, you whatever know, might larger there. house we might move into might have a hand in that just mm, i just i can't have you telling me too much information like that in case i'm questioned by the authorities sure but i mean like if we find him being philanderous oh if you have proof I'd gladly pay you for it i don't know to what end i would use it for but i would gladly pay you for it the quality of the proof the higher the coin Perfect. Anyway, like true good night, everyone. I'll wait with you, please. So, was there anything Everyone. interesting that I caught looking around? Oh, dude, this place is loaded. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have like buying time at this point, pretty much. This dude, he's big game hunter. So, you saw like high quality, like crossbows, pelts, hunting equipment. I mean, fine china, vases. I mean, you, you get in here with a couple hours worth of work and a proper fence, you could make a lot of coin. Nice. Okay. So we got, what, about six minutes left, but I think this is a good pause point. We can pick up next session, which will be, what, session 20? Yeah, with a total diversion from the plot. Yeah, <laughs> hey. Like I said, I... Whatever you all want to do, I am happy to accommodate. Damn. Poster with a pun on it. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, it was a... It's one of those things where it's so bad, I kind of love it. Yeah. Uh, Guy, you know, yeah. old king coming back, an undead army. Psh everyone needs a little distraction mm -hmm. we need a win for another week we need a win after taking a lightning bolt to the face yeah i am so glad that only two of you went in because that spell 
continues to move through targets until it exhausts all targets or until someone critically succeeds the save. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Harsh. that would have that would have hit uh, all of us and it would have downed me. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay. It was uh, nasty. Go and take 200 XP. Not dying. <laughs> I've decided I had it all mathed out, but you know, if I give you all 200 XP a session, that means we get at least, you know, one level in a month. There will be an occasional month where we don't get a level. So it's great pacing for me. All right. That seems good to me. Someday we'll be level 12 also, maybe. There you go. Yeah, then we'll come back. Kick then we'll kick his ass. <laughs> All right. Yeah, a little side quest. That works. Mm hmm. Just had a list of rumors that you could find in a bar, and that was the one that looked the funniest at the moment. So I'm glad we went with it. Agreed. Uh, yeah, let's do some closing plugs. Uh, Bert, why don't you kick us off? Hey, uh, check out my stream at twitch.tv slash steam steel murder this Friday. We're playing some BX Dungeons and Dragons going through Castle Amber. Um, this Sunday is some Shadowrun yeah. using the one roll engine system. Um, over the Christmas uh, holiday week of, week after, somewhere in there, I'm going to be running a bunch of one shots, some Call of Cthulhu, some Coin and Blood, all kinds of fun, fun, creepy stuff. Yeah. So check it out. Oh. Check out the podcast at Blue Magic Bill U M A G I K dot com. Over a decade worth of fun, fun games there. Very cool. Uh, Jeff, what do you got going? Uh, tomorrow night over on the Garb Black Games uh, Twitch channel, you can find Jeremy and I playing some Delta Green Visid, uh, hot bear on bear action. Uh, Friday, back over on uh, my own channel, twitch.tv slash the lollygaggers. We'll be playing more Delta Green, uh, but it's going to be a possible landscapes. Uh, and uh, Saturday, we're doing One Ring. Uh, and Monday, we are back to Ultraviolet Grasslands. Nice. Very cool. Uh, here on Defenders, tomorrow night, that's Thursday, we're going to be back at Watercolors and Warriors, our fifth ed. I said Ghibli inspired. It's, you know, loosey goosey now. The crew owns a bar. They've hired Danny DeVito as their manager of the bar. Um, they pay him well, but the stipulation is they're not allowed to ask him about his cocaine habit. Um, Friday, 10 p.m. here on Defenders, we're going to be back for some more Shadow Run using the Year Zero engine. The crew's got a plan. They're going to kick it off. They did some social engineering, and they accidentally got a homeless man tased by a security guard. So things are going great. <laughs> uh, Saturday, we got a double header actually. Uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. Central, we've got Forbidden Lands. Um, and then Saturday night at 9 p.m. Central, we're doing a next episode of The Darkest House. So, busy Saturday. And that's that's it. I'll be over on Bert's channel on Sunday for Shadowrun and Jeff's channel on Monday for UVG. Oh, we got. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I fucking got. So uh, until we see you next time, why don't you go start some fires, do some drugs, and get a booster shot? Because, you know, Omicron be Percy I-8's coming for you, too. Anyway, deuces.